Hey guys, welcome back to the Shire. My name is Rebecca and I am an online reseller and a stay at home mom. This video is going to be part number 14 and also the last video of our Death to the Death Pile series. So the Death to the Death Pile series, if you aren't familiar, is my challenge to get everything in my death pile listed prior to yard sale season beginning. And yard sale season has begun. I haven't gone out yet, but I will be going this weekend and uh, this is April 4th when I am recording it. So you guys will see this probably after I've already gone yard sailing. But I really enjoyed doing this challenge and I don't know how much everyone else enjoyed watching it, but I hope it was motivating. I have gotten some messages from people saying it motivated them to get to work on their death piles. And it was just really nice to know that all of those items that I spent money on um, were actually getting listed and quite a bit of them sold. So I will do one more like death pile series video where I'm just going to wrap up everything, kind of talk about the numbers, hopefully. Um, and that might take a little bit to put together now I'm thinking about it, but I want to see how many items I ended up having um, and how many ended up listing and how many ended up selling, hopefully. So there's definitely some stuff left, but it's not a lot at all. Literally like one tote worth, which I am okay with. Um, and I'm excited to get the rest of it listed. Before we get into the items that I will be photographing and hopefully listing this coming week, um, we are going to talk about niches or niches or niches or however you wanna say it. Everyone says it a little bit differently. Um, but this is something that I think has been a really like hot topic in the reseller community lately. Um, just what they call niching down or niching down. Um, and that's basically like focusing in on like one type of item to sell, basically. <laughs> There's no like exact definition in the reseller world for this because it can be taken in a couple of different ways. But what I'm referring to is when people say, you know, oh, I sell just books. I sell just shoes, I sell just clothing, maybe they sell just men's clothing, or they sell just kids clothing, or whatever uh, it may be. And a lot of people talk about that that's a really good business plan for them. I am certainly not here to disagree with that. Um, I just am going to speak from my own personal experience about niching down and whether I plan to do that or whether I have done that already. So uh, spoiler alert, I have not, <laughs> I have not niched down, um, but I definitely could see the benefits of it. And I think if I were to niche down, I would have to be on clothing, which is basically just how I started was doing just clothing. I guess I did shoes too. Um, a lot of, I think there's a lot of resellers that do clothing and shoes, that's their niche. But I think I would get bored to be honest. Um, and I think it would take a little bit of the joy of reselling away from me because I like finding a bunch of random different things, whether it's hard goods or shoes or clothes or what have you. I could definitely see the benefit right now just looking into my office. I have a shoe rack that holds my shoes. It's not very big, it's wide, and the shape and size of that is mainly due to the office space I used to have. Um, that's just where the shape or whatever that would fit in the space I had. But I was thinking, I'm like, you know, if I didn't do shoes, if I didn't have that rack there at all, I could fit probably like nine more totes worth of clothing over there, <laughs> which, uh, I mean, sounds really great, right? But when you think about it, at least for me, those shoes, shoes are pretty quick and easy usually to pick up, to photograph, um, sometimes to clean. I don't typically pick up very dirty shoes for that reason. I don't want to clean them, but um, they tend to bring in like a decent chunk of money typically. I mean, I've sold some boots recently, you know, selling a pair of boots for 70 bucks and making like a $40 profit. I don't make a $40 profit on most of the clothing items I'm selling. And I think it's a lot of it is going to depend on where you are or where you are getting your inventory from. So for example, I know the reselling couple Hustle and Hooks, they recently started niching down. Um, they did a lot of different things and they now have gone down to clothing and I think, I think they do shoes too, but I know for sure they do 
clothing mostly. And I think they're doing like liquidation type boxes where they're getting inventory sent to them. But that's not something I'm looking into because I'm not doing that mass amount of inventory like I don't I don't do this full time I don't have anyone else working for me or with me so that's just like not gonna work for me <laughs> um I don't have that much to process and I don't really want to do it that way that wouldn't be fun for me I don't think uh because I kind of started reselling because I love thrifting and yard sailing and I can't just keep everything so I wanted to be able to do something with it and that's kind of where I'm at now. So the benefits of niching down is that it can definitely expedite your processes. Um, like they talk about and lots of other resellers who niche down talk about, you know, especially if you have other people working for you or working with you, um, if you're teaching them how to do something, you know, it's like, okay, this is a shirt. This is how we photograph it. These are the measurements we take. This is how you package it. This is how we store it and you ship it this way. Easy. But it's like, okay, well, here's a shirt. Here's how you do that one. Okay, well, here's a pair of shoes and that's how you have to do that one. And then there's like a pot over here and you have to do this one a little bit differently. But don't forget when you have this like breakable vase, you have to do that differently. It's a lot. And I totally feel that because I do sell a little bit of everything and you know, if I have like five shirts to ship out, quick and easy, super simple, you know, take them out of my inventory, put them in a poly mailer, you're gone. Then you pull something out that's like breakable and you're like, okay, I've got to find the right size box. I got to bubble wrap it, make sure it's taped, make sure it's floated in there. And uh, it takes a lot more for sure to do that. It takes more time. It takes more energy. Um, you know, and like storing things, like I don't have a great storage system for hard goods. They're still in totes, just like my clothes are. And that's a pain in the butt. So <laughs> you're not maximizing the storage space. I don't have like shelves to put them on. So it's definitely beneficial to niche down if that's what you want to do. It also comes in handy to niche down when you are looking like at thrift stores for a specific item. So let's take shoes for an example. Um, I know there's a couple shoe resellers out there. I don't typically like follow just the shoe resellers. I believe uh, there's one, I think his name is like Dealing with Dalton. Um, I'll put his channel here if that's correct or I'll try to fix that. Um, but I think he's the one who does like just shoes. And I think he's the one who's also talked about, you know, Okay, you go into this Goodwill, they so go into Goodwill number one, you go to the shoe racks, you find the shoes that you want, you get them, you leave. Then you can go into Goodwill number two, look at the shoe rack, you know, and you go into this thrift store, look at the shoe rack. Like, he doesn't have to spend hours in one thrift store flipping through the racks to find, you know, a shirt, and then there's the shoes. Well, maybe he missed the shoes now because he was looking through the rack and someone else went over to the shoes. Like, it can expedite your sourcing process a lot, but, I'm still not going to do it. <laughs> but one of the things that it really depends on is also, like I said, where you're getting your inventory. So I mostly get my inventory from yard sales during yard sale season or the thrift stores when it's colder out. Um, since I'm in the north, we don't have yard sales like year round like they might in the south. I don't know, but I would imagine they have them probably year round down there. So I know in my area that just from the shoes I've looked at, like I, I cannot sell just shoes. They mark them up a lot of the times. They just really aren't that great a lot of the times. Um, like we're talking from the thrift stores, it's, I don't think I would be able to like survive essentially uh, reselling on that. And same thing with like just a lot of the other items around me. Um, I just don't feel like we have like super high quality items. So I consider myself more of like a volume seller. I'm not selling like gowns that cost hundreds or thousands of dollars. Um, I mean, I, you know, there's people out there who are like, oh, I just find Lululemon all the time. And I mostly leave it. I'm like, I've seen Lululemon like two times in my life in a thrift store. And I've been able to buy it once because the other one was like severely flawed. Um, there's just so many of these brands that people talk about that I'm like, I just, we don't find those like, where I'm at, I'm, I mean, I literally live like in the country and I still travel 20 minutes just to get to a thrift store. Um, 
and we just we're not near a city we don't have like high-end stuff people are really like buying things for necessity for the most part here and those are the types of things that i like to sell the most i will pick up anything i can find that um, i think is worth picking up but i find like the necessity type things do better for me so like the boots that i sold they're like something you would probably wear for a job um same thing with like a lot of the other like car hard overalls people who are working need those um, and things like that. So maybe I could make niching down work if I opened up my avenues, if I traveled further to go to more thrift stores, if I did like liquidation or source maybe online. Um, I know like people talk about sourcing in stores, like we don't have a Nordstrom rack. I've never even been or seen a Nordstrom rack. Um, I think it's just not in my area. We don't really have high-end stores around here. So for me, I feel like it's easiest and makes the most sense and gets me the lowest cost of goods to shop from or to source from yard sales mostly. Um, and like I've said before, it just, that's what I love to do. Um, that's where I find my most interest is just being able to see like a little bit of everything. Uh, I just think that's really fun. So let me know in the comments have you niched down? Have you heard about niching down? Is there one category that you want to niche down into that you are most interested in, you think would benefit you the most? Um, I don't particularly see myself doing that like ever in the future. If I niche down at all, it would be like just into clothing probably because clothing is more plentiful than really anything near me. But I just don't see it happening. Um, I just, I really do this for like the joy of finding things and I like to find a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. Now that we've covered that topic, let's move into the clothing items I'm going to show you for this week. I picked out 15 tops. I think they're all short sleeve and they're a little bit of a mix between men's, women's, and I think there's like one kid's piece. So I was going to try to do all of the tops, the short sleeve tops, but there's like 10 more in my closet. So 25 would be a little bit more than I could handle for a week. So we're gonna do the 15 and uh, yeah, I'll just show you what I've got. This first item is just a shirt that was given to me by a family member and it is new. So this is like one of those probably like China Chibi brands. It doesn't actually have a brand on it. It just says it's an XXL, just a black, oops, women's black short sleeve shirt. A cute flower on it and it says let it be so it doesn't I don't think it has a physical tag on it but it was um, oh and it has this like double raw hem kind of on it um, but this was still in like the plastic like a felt cellophane bag kind of like I would use um, from China or wherever <laughs> So we have that shirt, so no cost of goods into that. This next one is an interesting piece. So I got this from a yard sale down the road for a dollar. And this is actually the brand UGG, like the boots UGG. It's like a short sleeve cardigan. It's really long, has that tie in the middle. And then it's like, kind of like a waffle texture on the back. And I guess most of it actually on the front too is that texture and then it's just like solid up here and then it has the little let's see can you see it there we go ugh well it says ugh this says ugh so it's an extra small small I didn't really know they made any kind of clothing so I have no idea. Um, I grabbed it because it was a dollar. It said UGG and the MSRP apparently was $98. So it says this W Holly it has a style number, a color, size. Um, yeah, so I hopefully with that style number in there, it'll be easy to look up. I don't think it's anything particularly great for fabric content. Yeah, 100% cotton, so. I don't know, for a dollar, I said, ugh. I thought I could get something out of it. It's kind of like this, like, uh, 
was that like a bat wing kind of uh, sleeve? I'm using great words today. Yeah. Anyway, no idea what like what that might comp at. This shirt I think is really cool. This came from a churchyard sale last year, last summer. I think I have like 50 cents into this or something, but this freaking cool dog face. If you're not familiar with these kinds of shirts, this is typically by the brand The Mountain. This one is. There might be some like more knockoff style ones. Here's the tag. So that's a size small and dyed and printed in the US, 100% cotton. I sold one other The Mountain shirt. I can't remember what was on it. I think it was a brown shirt, but I think it was like a 2XL. So a very different size. Um, I don't even remember what was on it. Horses or something maybe? I feel like it was maybe like a Native American print. I don't know. But there's a lot of dog lovers out there. I think this will sell. I don't know how much, maybe like 20, 15 to 20, I would think. This next shirt uh, might end up in my new death pile. If you're not aware, I have like a mini death pile coming out of this death pile because it's items that I find like, oh, this needs stitched or there's a stain on this or whatever. I feel like that always happens. Um, I did work through a little bit of it with some like kids shoes that needed cleaned, but I haven't worked through the other ones yet. I'll get there at some point, but um, looking at this already, uh, it's gonna go over there, <laughs> but I'll show it to you anyway. So this was an item that my mom had picked up while she was out yard sailing. Um, and it is this like Harley Davidson, it's that like work shirt material, but it's like where it's zipped to right now is the top of the zipper. So it's meant to like be a V-neck shirt. And nothing really on the back. It's a little bit like faded from wash wear, but it's embroidered here. It says Harley Davidson. Same thing on the other side. And the size is cut out, but it is a genuine Harley like merchandise shirt. Let me see. I think it's probably like a large, like a women's large, if I had to guess. Um, Cause I'm a medium. Yeah, I would think it's like a large, but I'll do measurements and see. But even just standing in front of the window, I can see, see if I can show it. Yeah, you can see like, ah, can't point to it at the same time. But here it's like discolored. It's like yellowish, not quite sure what's going on with that. It's hard because this is like an off-white color. So, um, but just standing in front of this window here with the natural light, I can tell that that needs treated. So. That'll go into the treat pile and get listed whenever I get around to fixing that stuff. This was, of course, another yard sale find. I love the color on this. It buttons all the way down the front. I just don't have them buttoned right now. But this is a Columbia Omnishade Sun Protection women's shirt in a 2X. Um, if you saw my other death pile videos, I had some like, I had a long sleeve REI shirt kind of like this and is there another women's shirt like that this um yard sale I went to this lady had a bunch of these like plus size like Columbia brand and like outdoorsy brand stuff um in pretty con good condition and this shirt is vented on the back and let's see it kind of has like probably can't tell on camera but this is like that like stretchy like moisture wicking performance material. It has a zipper breast pocket here. Mm, I think that's it, but I love this color. It's really nice. It's really bright. It's like a pinky orange in person. So I think that other shirt, the REI one sold for, is it like 18 maybe I think? And it had some flaws, so this one, I'm guessing maybe around like 20. 
the, this is from the same person as well. It's kind of wrinkly. It's really wrinkly. This is also Columbia and this one says PFG, which is professional fish, fishing game, professional. I'll put it here. I can never remember, but something about fishing. <laughs> I don't fish. <laughs> And I think this is a, yeah, this is a 2X as well. This is not the Omnishade one. This is more of like a cottony material. The other one was like more of a swishy material, but it does have vents on the back and it says PFG here as well. Men's PFG shirts are um, really good. From what I hear, I don't think I've found one, but you can see how it's like vented. This is just like a nice, uh, I guess it's like a lavender. It's like a light pinky purple color. Uh, short sleeves, buttons all the way down. But yeah, so probably like another, you know, maybe 20 bucks or something like that. The, the fact that it's plus size should help. This shirt I had gotten at that church thrift store that I went to just recently, but I got this the first time I had gone there. So this was on their new with tags rack because it is new with tags. This is just a really basic um, striped shirt. This is from Bowdoin. I don't know how well Bowdoin does. Like, I'm just getting into listing the Bowdoin items I have, so I don't know really how well they do all around. I know it's supposed to be a nicer brand, and I don't know how something more basic like this would do. Um, but it says, Bowdoin, the world needs more texture. I guess it doesn't say the size there. Oh. Wait a second, there it should say. Extra large, it's really hard because it's kind of bunched up, but yeah, it's an extra large. And I'm pretty sure this is just like a cotton shirt. Yeah, 100% cotton. And it does have, I think, a style name in it. I can never remember if they put years on theirs. I don't think so. But it's new with tags, so unfortunately, like I said before, they write directly on it. So this shirt was $3. And I might just cut... I'll probably just cut this tag off on a gather, to be honest, because it just says, feel the difference, we've picked this fabric for its interesting texture, blah, blah, it just talks about the fabric. This one is the one that actually says Bowden Glorious glorious British style. Uh, so, I think it's a nice basic. Actually, on the back too, it's almost like a peplum, but just on the back. So, it's kind of a cute detail. Next up is an item that's actually from my husband's closet. It's this Nike polo shirt and it is for the 49ers um, which is Charlotte. We lived in Charlotte for a bit and he went to grad school there at UNC Charlotte. So um, I actually remember buying this at Play-Doh's for him. I think because he needed some shirts that were like not you know not button-up shirts but nicer than a t-shirt. It does have like a little bit of a snag here so I don't know, but yeah, I got it at a Plato's closet that was right near us. It is a size large. So it's on the back. You can tell it was like added. I th I'm pretty sure this was all added because it looks like they embroidered, like you can see the screen print directly behind it. So. That's okay though. I don't think it'll matter too much. I don't expect this to be like a high dollar shirt anyway, but it is that like, um, like moisture wicking kind of material. So I think that'll be nice. This next item I think was also from that thrift store, the church store. Yeah, it was. So we have this polo shirt, just a men's polo. And it says Orlando, Florida. It has Mickey Mouse golfing. And it's, I'm pretty sure this is like an old, like a vintage Disney tag. And it's a size large. Yeah, maybe not like, I don't think it's like super old, but it might be like 90s. If 
I don't see a year anywhere, I won't say that's vintage, but it certainly seems like it could be. And I can't tell quite if this is like a navy blue or a black. So I'll have to look into that. And then it has like some green right here. Just comparing it to the black items I have here, I feel like it's navy blue. But this was $2, I think it says. Yep, two bucks. So I like picking up any kind of like Disney branded stuff, especially like in a size large and people like to go golfing at Disney. I guess Disney has golf courses, I'd assume. What are they called? Disney Springs? Is that it? Springs, Disney Springs Resort or something? I don't know if that has golf. Sounds like it should. This one was from a recent haul, so I won't like describe it all, but I'll show it to you. It's this vintage Harley Davidson polo shirt in like pristine condition. So excited to list that. That's a large as well. A lot of these are from recent thrift hauls. So this is that Foot Joy shirt. I haven't looked up yet about the uh, Eagles Nest Country Club. So I still gotta look up about that, but I think that might be something local. So that might hurt the value a bit. And that one was a size extra large. Then we have this Pearl Azumi shirt, another new one from recent thrift haul. I think, was this a 2XL? Oh, that's hard to read. Yeah, XXL, so XXL Pearl Azumi. If you have cycling stuff, now is definitely a good time to list it because people are gonna be getting out more spring, summer to do cycling. This is the other Pearl Azumi shirt, so hopefully I'm gonna do my best to list these like very close together. So hopefully someone will buy both of them together. I can't quite remember if I had mentioned this one before or not. I think I did, but it's this Harley Davidson t-shirt, short sleeve women's shirt in a size small. Yep. And this was something my mom had found at a yard sale just recently. Um, and it was like a buck, I think it was a dollar. It is embroidered on the back. Harley Davidson, Somerset PA. Then we have this uh, kid's piece. And I think this is a tunic. It probably should have gotten listed already because it's long sleeves. But is this Hannah Anderson, I'm assuming tunic. Um, just due to like the arm length with the skirt length. I mean, that would be a very short dress. So I don't think that's it. It's a size 120. So I will need to look up what that is. I'll put that on the screen, whatever size that is. Definitely seems like a bigger girl. So I don't know, maybe like a six or eight. I'm not quite sure. And the tag says $4. So I either paid $4 or $2 for this. I think I got this like last summer from a thrift store. Um, and I just saved it because since it's like a bigger one, I want to hang it up. A lot of the kids clothes, I do flat lays, but this one's bigger. So I wanted to hang it. Since I know that that one shirt is going to be going to my cleaning death pile, I just pulled one more out of my closet to make it the 15 for this week. Whoops. It's just this like half sleeve stripey shirt. Um, it's from Banana Republic. It's a size medium. Um, this was just my shirt. I probably got it at a thrift store and wore it for a while, but I just don't wear it anymore. So this is probably like 15 bucks, 10 to 15. It's a nice color for spring though. And that is everything for this week. And that is the last haul from my death pile that you guys will see. So you won't get to see all the other items I have. Um, you'll just have to, I guess, follow the accounts that I list on if you want to, uh, or the platforms that I list on and see what those items are. If you're on Instagram, you can go ahead and follow me at the Cozy Shire over there. You might see some of these items pop up over there. Um, and you can just kind of check out how I'm doing different processes. You can message me over there, um, and participate in different polls that I put up in my stories. I really want to get more input from you guys to see what you want to see in the future. I have uh, some videos like in my head planned to do, but I do want to see or want to hear what you guys want to see. So please either leave it here or feel free to message me on Instagram. 
um, and let me know. Let me know what kind of topics you're looking for or what kind of information you're not seeing from other people that you might want to see from me. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also hit the bell notification so it'll tell you when I post a new video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this series and I will see you in the next one.